Overtones, do this and get the best sound. Practice overtones and get a much richer sound and better tone control. Overtone makes your sound richer. You want a rich sound with a lot of overtones displayed present. With a lot of overtones present in your sound, your sound gets more projection, it becomes more powerful and you get much better control of your sound. Overtones also is a direct influence on your ability to play falsetto register on the saxophone. All this leads to better control of the horn. Great sound also influences the ease of your technique on the saxophone. All saxophone players should practice overtones and get all these advantages. <laughs> overtones so damn important. What are overtones? How to, the best way to practice overtones. Build overtone exercises, apply overtones into your playing, show, play, analyze jazz licks using overtones. Hi, I'm Sam Belgor and welcome to Sam Belgor's saxophone lessons. Why is practicing overtones so damn important? Overtones is a part of your sound no matter what sound you produce on what instrument. Often we describe a sound as rich, full of fat. These words are a sign of a lot of overtones in your sound. Our ears hear this and it doesn't matter what level you are on as a listener. The overtones in your sound also makes you hear a clear sound. This makes it easier to execute melodies and runs on the saxophone because the sound is just there, it's just happening. The flow of a sound with many overtones makes it easy to play any jump, play high, play low, play fast, play slow, because the sound is always clear and present. Overtones also have a direct influence on your ability to play falsetto register on the saxophone. When I take a moment to think of great saxophone players which use overtones in their playing, names comes up as Dexter Gordon, John Coltrane, Michael Brecker and Chris Potter. I bet there are hundreds and hundreds of examples of great saxophone players which use the overtones in their playing. So get on with it, use it. Some saxophone players use the overtones as a blues effect but also a lot of these saxophone players use it for licks and lines they are playing. What you get is great sound, smooth technique, easier execution, easier falsetto register, great projection and nice effects when practicing the overtones. What are overtones? Overtones are present in all things in nature. If you hit a piece of wood or a stump the ground you get a sound. In this sound and all other sounds, there's a row of natural overtones. The natural overtones can be written down in the Western music writing more or less accurately. The row of overtones look like this. This is on a C. When I play them, they sound like this. <laughs> fingers from the low C on the horn. It's all played with the low C as fingering. I don't even touch the octave key. So the first interval is an octave, then a fifth, then a fourth, then a major third, a minor third, another smaller minor third and then a second. The interval gets smaller and smaller the higher you get. In all the tones we play in the overtone row, these overtones are present with these intervals. If I play a low C, the whole row of overtones are present in this C I play. You cannot really hear them as clear notes, but you hear them as 
more sound, as projection, as fatter sound, as better sound. You want these overtones in your sound when you play. Practicing these, get these out in all the tones you are playing. Get the right movement here, get the right blowing here, you get the right power, that kind of stuff. When your instrument is well tuned, the overtones also tend to come out better. Since the overtone is a natural row of notes which responds to the natural resonance in your instrument. If you want to go deeper into the theory and physics behind the overtones, then I would really recommend you to check this article in Wikipedia. So check the link in the description below. How to the best way to practice overtones. Overtone practice is pretty much a natural process. It has a lot to do with breathing, ambusure, posture and airflow. So get started with playing the low C on the saxophone. Feel how the C resonates in the whole saxophone. Make this C the best sounding note by blowing full out from your lungs, deep breath in your abdomen and add good tension to the push, okay? Mm, add some good power from your power bank. Play with a relaxed ambusure and an open throat. Tip. Check my earlier video on sound and long notes, how you can really get a relaxed uh, jaw, ambusure, great blowing from your abdomen, from your midriff. Check the video, it's in the description below. When you have the best sound, you can play the middle C. <laughs> The low C. Use the same method as mentioned before. Check the video, check what you need to do to get this great fat C out. Check the link in the description. To get the feel of the two C's and the switch, take a moment to switch between the low C and the middle C. Just play it really easy. Think about how you switch, how your fingers does this. <laughs> sound of the pitch of the middle C. So what I'm doing, I'm playing the middle C and then I'm just switching my fingers to the low C but keeping the sound on the middle C. It does not matter if you succeed the first time. You have plenty of time to check this out. Good tips to provoke the note. Give a little bit of extra push from your diaphragm when you're going to hit that note, when you're changing exactly the moment when you're changing your fingers. Make an inner count, for example, to two. So you say, I'm playing the middle C, one, two, and the next one, you're changing. One, two, change. Then you have a kind of clear goal that there I have to change my fingers and you can prepare your diaphragm, your ambusher, your throat, everything for this new sound. Make time for this. Take it really easy. It's just long notes. So take it easy. Breathe with them. Play with them. Just take it easy. Relax and push air through the saxophone. Just push this air through the saxophone. Nothing more. A slight accent when you're changing the note can also help you. But you should be able to play the notes with and without an accent. Tuning the overtones. You hear a richer sound of the overtones than the normal C. Because you are hearing the whole resonance of the full saxophone. Because you're playing the low C here. You're playing the low C and you actually get the full resonance even though you're playing the upper notes. So you just get much more power. What also happens is that the overtones are not completely in tune. You saw that in the beginning. So we started with an octave, then a fifth, then a, a fourth, then a third, then a minor third, another minor third. And the intervals get smaller and smaller, but they are not really fitting into our 440 hertz and 880 
uh, hertz system. They are a little bit smaller, these intervals, so they are not completely in tune, these overtones. The higher you get, the smaller the intervals. A fifth is not anymore a fifth, it's a little bit less. So are all the intervals. There are two ways to go around this. Play the overtones the way they are, slightly out of tune, just blow them out, get them out there. This gives you a great effect when changing between a normal tone and an overtone. So you get this, this, uh, this special dissonance. What you can also do is force them into tune using your airstream, your throat, your jaw position and your embouchure. Play this with the tuner, play this with the piano, check the notes, see which ones are in tune and which ones are not. There are good things in both ways. If you're forcing them into to be in tune, you get used to tune with your jaw, with your embouchure, and not just tuning here. You get a lot of flexibility. In the other way, if you not, don't tune them, you get this nice dissonance effect if you play the no, uh, when you play the overtones. Check the overtones with your tuner, telephone, keyboard, try to hit the right note, or you can hit the natural overtones. What you like the best, there is no correct way of doing this. There is no great, this is how you should do it. You should do both. Taking the exercise a bit further. You should learn to switch back and forth between the overtone note and the normal note. Some examples and exercises of this are... I'll just play the exercise, you can see it here. <laughs> switching between the normal C and the overtone C. The next exercise is using my embouchure a little bit. I'm going down to the low C and switching up to the high C. <laughs> down to the low C, jumping up to the normal middle C. The last one is pushing the low C up to the overtone C. Check it out. <laughs> Make sure you're using a lot of air. Work with a good airstream. Keep a loose embouchure. Keep a relatively low jaw because you're working with the low notes. Do not make unnecessary tension in your jaws. Do not bite your embouchure to get these notes out. Have to fix it a little bit. Push, pull, more, stop the note. A little bit of accent. You'll get there. Just take your time and take it easy. The second overtone in the row. After the first overtone comes, of course, the second overtone. The second overtone of the C is the G in the middle octave of the saxophone. <laughs> Just repeat the same exercise pattern more or less. To get the fingers used to the fast movement of the big jumps, play the middle G and change it with the low C. <laughs> measurements as before. Good embouchure, good breathing, good, 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 all the list. Go back and check the list. Do the same things. Count to two and then change uh, the note. This gives you a good and tight change. Your fingers are important here. Maybe work with a little accent on the notes to get them out. The second overtone is in many cases more difficult than the first and the third. Here are three exercises 
to get this through the system. Switching between the G and the C, overtone G. Playing the normal G, switching to the overtone G, playing the low C, jumping up to the normal G. This gives you flexibility. You want flexibility. You want your airstream to be able to flow everywhere in the saxophone. Okay, last exercise. To get that last G overtone G, I'm putting a little accent on that one. I have to practice more. The third overtone, the third overtone of the C is the high C. Use the same row of exercise to get this one out. Copy paste the exercise that I just did, put it on this note. So I start with just changing my fingers between the high C and the low C. Sounding the high C and playing the overtone high C. I'm giving quite a push here to get that overtone C straight away. Keep it relaxed, keep it slow, practice slow. You'll get there. Overtone exercises. There are many, really many, many overtone exercises which are fun and extremely good to know and be able to play. You can start all these exercises mentioned on the low B flat, the low B, or the low C, or of course the low C sharp, the low D. Here's an example of the overtones of the B. <laughs> of the B, do this with the B flat, do this with the C, do this with the D, C sharp, the D, and so forth and so forth. Pro tip! In the overtone practice manual, I have written out all the overtone exercises described in this video up to two and a half octave from the B, low B flat, B, C, C sharp, and D. I have added scale exercises with overtones, a bunch of licks. I've stuffed in there how to use fingerings and sounds in licks you can play. Get up to speed with great sound, practice your overtones, links in the description to the great overtone practice manual. Apply your overtones into your playing. This is why we are doing this. We want great sound, we want great technique, but we also want the overtones to be a part of our playing. There are more reasons why we should practice the overtones besides the great sound, of course. You can actually use them in a bunch of great musical jazz lines. Since I like jazz, I have applied the overtones to jazz music. Two ways to use the overtones directly into your playings are these. This gives you an eight note interchanging effect. I'm playing the G, then I'm playing the overtone G with the low C. 
You can also change the notes when you're using this effect. In this way, you can make your own effects and scale runs. When working with these effects, I'm mostly thinking the first or the second overtone. So on the C, this is the first C or the G, so the octave or the fifth. Here, in these examples, I'm using the fifth. That's most common to me. Show, play and analyze two jazz licks using overtones. Starting with playing the normal G, exchanging this with the overtone G of the C, going back to the normal G. Then I'm going to the seventh while the A, the seventh of the C7. I'm moving down this scale of the C7 all the way from the B flat from the seventh to the root. And then I'm ending this lovely lick with a bebop chromatic note. So the C, the B and the B flat. Alternating the G with the overtone G of the low C. Changing it up a half step to the A flat and the overtone of the A flat on the D flat. Then going back to the G alternating with the alternate G of the low C. Between the alternating overtones, I'm using the minor third of the note as an extra coloring. So resolving then the D7 flat 9 on the third to the F sharp. Going down that lovely scale from the A, F and E flat, that's the flat 10 and the flat 9. And then I'm hitting that G minor major 7 chord, running down the chord notes. Practice overtones every day. I would really recommend everyone to get into the overtone practice. Get the overtone practice manual and get going to get a much better sound. Got much better control. Get this in there. It really is amazing how much this helps. Take the exercise in small steps and get going in this great sound. The link is in the description. More great sound exercises coming up right now. Sound is everything. Get a better sound exercises and how to's. Check the YouTube video coming right up now. In the blues I played in the beginning of the video, I used a few of the overtone patterns. So if you want to check the subscription, go to my Patreon page or go to my shop and check the full transcription of this solo. One more. Go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter, share your questions in the comments below. All links mentioned in this video are available in the description. So check them out, go there, see what I'm all up to and please play music and have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Have a good one.